All right, so welcome to the third release of Rigbox Reborn, the rigging tool. In this particular tool set, we're going to be focusing on our element creation, so things like creating joints, clusters, locators. There's also a section for constraint options, also display options, so we can hide the visibility of our geometry or our IK handles so they don't keep getting in the way when we're trying to do things. As with all the previous Rigbox Reborn scripts, each individual section is broken into its own script, so if you find you don't like a section or you only want to use one particular section or anything along those lines, feel free to hodgepodge your own interface together. I totally don't mind. The only thing I ask is that you give credit for any inspiration or code that you take away from Rigbox Reborn. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the functionality of Rigbox Reborn, Rigging Tool. So first thing first, actually executing the script. I'm going to come down to the script editor and click on the button to bring up the window. I want to make sure that I'm on a Python tab since this is a Python script. I want to type in import followed by the script name, so rr underscore main underscore rigging. On the line directly below that, I want to retype the script name followed by dot window underscore creation open and close parenthesis. So if I highlight those two lines and hit the execute button, it pops up the interface for me. I'm going to close out the script editor so we can focus on the tool set. The first frame is the windows option. And these are just windows that I find I use all the time while creating uh, rigs for my animators. So I have a button for things like the outliner, the component or connection editor rather, uh, set driven keys, um, some of these windows I use more than others, but I find that I go to them fairly often. Um, if the abbreviations are confusing, there is annotation, so all you have to do is mouse over the button and it will tell you what the button actually is going to open for you. These are the buttons that would be created if you made a shelf button. So since I was using shelves before I made my tool set, it's just easier to use the abbreviations that were already there on the buttons. But that's really all there is to this frame, it's just windows. The next section within the rigging tool is the elements frame. So I'm going to click that down and this is where we're going to be able to find all of our element creation options. So if I wanted to create joints, I could click the button and just snap them onto the grid. You can see I have that joint chain there. If I want to change the options for my joint tool, all I have to do is double click the joint button and that will bring up that particular tool setting. Same with like the mirror joint feature. If I double click it, it will bring up the option box for me so I can change that uh, depending on how my scene is. So exit those. Um, if I want to create IKs, I can. IK spline. If I want to create my own custom curve, I can click on the CV curve tool and then just snap to the joints that I made. And if I bring out the outliner, I can then take the spline curve and just make my own little IK spline based on that. If I want to cluster the curve so I can actually affect my joints, I can come over to the cluster curves button and automatically create clusters that can then affect my joint chain. Uh, the cluster selected edge loop button, I actually need geometry to show you guys how that works. So let's go ahead and make a cylinder. Let's see. And we'll pretend that this is supposed to be a finger. So I need some additional subdivisions. And what I can do with this particular button is select the edges that I would want to put joints. And I can go ahead and click the cluster selected edge loops and it'll go through and put clusters directly in the center of my selected edge loops so I know exactly where I want to put my joints. 
Um, with some models, I find that I have a hard time actually getting the joints um, centered because I can't exactly see where the center is. Like Sometimes the fingers would be posed or curled and it's really hard to see in an orthographic view where the center is and the perspective doesn't give me a very clear idea either. But having the clusters gives me a definite center point of where I want to aim for my joints to be. And it also gives me a point where I can snap to. So if I actually take the tool, the joint tool, I can snap specifically to those clusters, except that one got messed up. But you get the general idea. So that's a pretty nifty button that I like having. Um, it saves me a lot of time. I also have a cluster button, so if there's a particular section that I want to cluster, I can just create an individual cluster on that, which is pretty nice. So go ahead and get rid of those guys. The miscellaneous buttons. The first one is my hierarchy creation. So whenever I am creating a rig, I notice that I create the same groups usually over and over again. So this button will actually go through and create my hierarchy for me. So I have rig and under rig I have my joints and the groups that I usually use for my joints, um, IKs, proxies. Some of these groups I do end up deleting before I pass my rig off to the animator. Like I usually do not pass blunt shapes once the rig is done. So I'll store them here, but before I send off my rig, I'll come in and delete this group out. Um, but for the most part, these are groups that I tend to use. And so having them auto created for me is pretty nice. There's also the empty group button, so if I ever need a null group, I can easily create that. Um, creating locators. I do have a freeze transform button here, as well as in the general tool, because I find that I do rotate my joints to get them into position, and it's easier to have an additional freeze transforms button here, as well as in my general tool. I also have the select hierarchy button so I can go through and select everything as well as local rotation axis so if I ever need to see the orientation of my joints it's easily accessible. I also have the constraint options um, with these guys. Let's move the locators so we can actually see them. Uh, there is the offset box so if I want to run this without the offset on I can easily snap items together, or if I do want the offset there, I can simply check the off that offset box and run the constraint however, however I need to. Um, there's also the orient and point constraints. I have the pull vector constraint, point on poly, as well as the aim constraint, because I do tend to use these as well. I just don't use them quite as frequently as these three main constraints. One thing to note about the aim constraint, it only brings up the option box because I find that I usually have to go in and tweak the settings. Um, very rarely do I, is there a default setting that I can use. But that is an overview of the elements frame. The last frame is the display frame. And these are just common display options that I really like having easy access to. So instead of coming up to show and clicking and figuring out what I want to actually hide or see, I can just say, hey, I really don't want to look at the geometry. It's getting in the way of what I'm trying to actually look at and just hide it with the simple click of a button. Um, same with clusters. If I'm not using them, I really don't want to see them. Uh, Sometimes the curves can get distracting if I'm trying to troubleshoot through a particular uh, issue that the rig may be encountering. Um, if I want to see the normals on the geometry, like I want to check to make sure that everything's correct, I can show those as well as adjust the size because sometimes they might be too large or too small depending on the scene. Hiding joints, that's another one. Sometimes those can get in the way. Um, I can also adjust the, the scene size for the joints rather than going to the individual radius in the channel box. IK handles are another um, issue that I, I tend to have since IK handles um, 
come first in selection order before joints. Usually I'll end up selecting the IK rather than the joint that I'm trying to select. So I can easily hide the IKs so they're not getting in the way. I can also adjust their size. So if they're too large for the scene or too small, I can correct that. And that's really the display frame inside of a nutshell, and that is Rigbox Reborn, rigging tool.